So we on with Jonathan and Illy. I love it. I love it. So you know, I'm, I was gonna go straight into the the, the whole. I just got to know how you guys met and what's the what's the what's the whole um. Cause it looks like you guys are a powerhouse over there. I, I love what I see. It looks like you got the best of both worlds. And and, and you guys, yeah. So Jonathan, you're a lawyer. And and, and I'm a lawyer. And Ellie, you're a, you're an advocate. <laughs> yes. yes. Ellie doesn't have a law degree, but she could be a lawyer. Okay. That's what I love to hear. She's man. been doing it long enough. Yes. So so you guys met doing doing just this, or you guys met and then you guys came together and figured out what you want to do. Yes, yeah, so you want to tell your version or I tell my version? Go ahead, tell your version. <laughs> no, you tell your version first. <laughs> so so we met. I, I was a I was a young public defender in Washington, DC. Okay. Illy was a student at Cornell. She was in DC doing a semester abroad, not abroad, a semester in DC. I met her. Uh, she then graduated, moved to DC, became a school teacher. Okay. We then got married, had our first child. And within just a couple of months, we moved to Georgia because they started a new statewide public defender system in Georgia. And so I came down here to be the training director. Hilly yep. came down to teach. Yep. And then maybe a couple of years later, Katrina hit. I went to New Orleans, helped with the effort to rebuild the public defender office there, did some work in Alabama, Mississippi. And it was just like eye-opening to me how sort of... Um, how everyone in the criminal justice system had come to accept this low standard of justice for poor folks. And I met these young, passionate public defenders, and they came into the system wanting to change the world. And within a couple of years, the passion would be beaten out of them. They'd either quit or they would become resigned to the status quo, start processing. So I had this idea to build an organization to give them training, support, community. I asked her to take a year off teaching to help me. It's been 14 years. She's never gone back. <laughs> hey, sometimes, say, what they say, sometimes, sometimes you, 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 your cause is bigger than your talent, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely it. That's definitely I, I it. I love it. So, so, so I, I want to get into what Gideon's promise is, but what, what made, I, I think there's so many different layers. And, and me, for one, I, I've been a person that's been in a lot of trouble. In my past, I've I've had a lot of friends that've been in situations, and in my last situation I was in, I was totally innocent. I was on tour, some mm -hmm. things happened, and I just realized, and it actually changed my life for the better because that was like the last straw. I was like, I never let them put me in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. But it, it showed me one thing: if I didn't have the resources or the finances, um, or the relationships that I yeah. had. I, I would I would have been in a bad situation because, um, you know, I, I would have been out there really by myself, and so I can only imagine mm -hmm. what it's like for these young guys coming up, or you know, e e even older cats that's really like out here and don't have the finance resources, and they're not educated mm -hmm. on the law, and they go in these situations, and um, they end up getting public defenders and not actually understanding that these people are here to help mm -hmm. you, and they're not taking top notch Johnny Cocker money. They're here because they mm -hmm. care. So I wanna go back with right. you and find out when did you know you cared and, 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 and what started your pursuit? So I, I, I'm gonna take that one because I came up, like Rap said, I'm not a lawyer. Um, they call me Rap. Oh, I'm sorry, they, we call him, it's John Rap and we call him Rap. Okay, <laughs> so, I like that. That's so, cool. um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I came into this work because when I was five, my father was charged with crimes that he allegedly committed years before his arrest. He was, I call, he, what we all call, he was walking down the street while black. Right. They pulled him over, saw an old arrest warrant. Next thing you know, he's thrown in jail. He's given a public defender who never really told the story that my dad had completely changed his life. He was married, had three small kids. My mom was pregnant at the time and my father ended up spending 10 years an Attica correctional facility because he didn't have a caring lawyer. So wow. he was assigned a public defender. Wow. And so my introduction into the criminal legal system was when I was five, being a kid of an incarcerated parent and having to be basically raised through jail, through jail, through, through right. prison. Right. And right. so what I learned was not, number one, I, we started this organization because I didn't want any other children 
to have to deal with and, and, and have to be raised by a parent that was incarcerated because the system failed them. Right. I didn't want people like me in the neighborhood I grew up in to feel like they didn't matter. And so my introduction into the system was really, I was told that people that looked like me and came from where I came from, they simply didn't matter. And that, and I got that education from a public defender mm. who didn't advocate for my dad. And so what I vowed to do when John talk, talk, started this organization or asked me to join to help him build it was really, the, the, the you know. The thing we're speaking on is Gideon's promise. Promise. Okay, cool. So right. Gideon's promise. Okay. Gideon's, thank you, because I need to say that. Gideon's right, right, right. Promise, when we started Gideon's Promise, it really was to provide good public defenders to low-income people. So just because you can't afford private defense counsel, that doesn't mean that you don't deserve the Johnny Cochran's of the, the best defense possible. And so that was one of the reasons we started Gideon's Promise, is to address that need, because my father never had an advocate stand behind and tell his story. Wow. But, 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 you know, Jeezy, gee, if I could just tack on to that, I think we wanted to, to train lawyers to provide the best representation possible, but we also recognize that the best of us can go into systems that have come to accept injustice, that have come to normalize injustice, and without support, before you know it, you're going along with that system, right? right. Before you know it, you become part of the problem. So the organization not only trains lawyers to be great public defenders, but also gives them the support, the community, the resources they need to keep that passion that brought them in in the first place. So they, they don't become those lawyers like Illy's father right. who just end up going through the motions, not realizing they're impacting five-year-old children, right. families. And, you just, and you're just dealing with somebody who's basically in the system. They don't have the passion. You know, it is what it is. But you're dealing with human lives. My, how, so how many, how many lawyers do you guys have in this, this, this organization? So we, when we started, we only had 16 lawyers in from two offices, one in Louisiana and one in here in Atlanta in Georgia. And then over the last 13 years, um, we've brought in, I think we've trained over a thousand wow. public defenders who are spread across wow. 27 states representing over 45 offices wow. nationally. And so wow. it quickly so grew. Yeah, <laughs> it's a movement, Jesus. It's a movement. It's a movement. <laughs> uh, listen, I know a lot of I know a lot of cats in the county jail right now that need to be getting this information, because you know there's mm -hmm. you know and the the thing is to have that that like it, it was crazy is when I came up, of course I came up in the streets, you know I came up through the ranks, so I've seen a lot of things that happened, and over time things became. Uh, no, it just came normalized. You became numb to the fact that mm -hmm. you know you can get caught hanging on the corner. And you know, be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You get five years. You know, it's like he's just gone for a while. Or you can be uh, mm -hmm. in a situation where something happens and it's five of y'all, and everybody shouldn't get charged with the crime, and you do. Um, we've been in a situation where I've seen cousins and people that I really love actually go do real time. I have fr I had a friend that did um, eight years. I had a friend that did ten. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that did twenty. And and, and and where we come from, you know, it was always you know put some bail money up, take care of your people. And what I've learned, you, you know, two things I learned. I learned just because you pay for a service doesn't mean somebody's going to give you a service. When you start thinking about child care, divorce, um, all these different things. It, it, it's just a cash cow. People just, they just want your money. They, they're not there to help you. So for somebody to take mm -hmm. lesser, to actually go in there to, you know, fight for you, that, that says a lot. And I came from a place mm -hmm. where we didn't have any fight when it came to the, 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 the judicial system. The the, um, the the county chair, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the office, these people, like, you, you were just hit. If you got them handcuffs on you, you got to deal with it. So to see, mm -hmm. you know, fast forward to the day of 2020, to say we actually have a front line, and you actually have people out there that are fighting for you. And when you tell me you guys went from six lawyers to over a thousand, that's at least a thousand times a day that somebody has a fighting chance. You know, I just want to commend y'all on that's not That's not no light work um before we dive deep in it like since we're talking you guys in atlanta is it how if if, if i'm an up-and-coming lawyer and i'm a young guy and i'm just getting out of law school and i want to get down with you guys like how does this work like what's this system like how do i get in like i want to be in the movement too like how, how, how do i get in i'm you know gz unfortunately the 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 mindset that we embrace 
while it's embraced by a lot of public defender offices, it's not embraced everywhere, right? I mean, as you know, there still are far too many public defender offices that have become beaten down and they're not giving people the, the kind of, 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 of service, of representation they deserve. I just want you to, not, not to cut you off, I want you to explain, we said offices, so there's different offices of public defenders? Yeah. So, so, so yes, I mean, all across America. So, so the name Gideon's Promise okay. comes from a Supreme Court case. In 1963, the Supreme Court decided a case called Gideon versus Wainwright. Right. And it said, if you can't afford a lawyer and you're charged with a crime, that you will be provided a lawyer, that that lawyer is literally the, the vehicle you need to access justice. And 50 some years later, we still haven't fulfilled that promise. Okay, so right? that's what Gideon's so, promise is about. So right, Gideon's promise, are, the lawyers we're training are that promise. But, but in states across the country, they get to decide how to provide that service. So some have public defenders in each county. Some have court-appointed lawyers who just take court-appointed cases. Some have lawyers who, who, who bid on contracts, right? The lowest bid and you get to handle all the cases in the county. Wow. So it really is varied. We, we work with offices. We look for offices, county-based offices that share our vision, that share our passion, and that wanna partner with us and send their young lawyers to get the training and support that we give. And in 2014, we actually did launch our first statewide partnership in Maryland. Every public defender in Maryland goes through this recruitment training mentorship model. We're looking into building a partnership in Texas, but for the most part, it's county-based offices. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I haven't even dug in yet. Like I'm just impressed with the past. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the union because, you know, and, and once you have a team that, that are dedicated to making a, you know, and, and that's the thing, like you have to make a difference in people's lives. Like things I get involved with, I just want to make sure that they make a difference. They're not just mm -hmm. things that I do. So to see you guys so passionate about that, that's, 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 that's really dope. And so you came, you came from, um, DC and you came to Atlanta because of the new program. Now, how many, and, and this, this is neither here nor there, out of these thousand lawyers, how many of these are, are Afri African-American lawyers and how many jobs have you guys provided for these type of um, lawyers? So we really focus, we, we are very intentional in our recruitment. So it's a, we have what we call values-based recruitment, values-based training and values-based support. So we have six core values at the organization. So, you know, it being client-centered, our client comes first, you know, right. doing what's best for our client. So for us with diverse, diversity is another really important piece. I think our, probably I would say, depending on the year, because it depends on that graduating law school class, mm -hmm. what the dynamics of law school. Um, for people that don't know, the uh, there is a lack of diversity in law school, period, across the nation. There are not a lot of black and brown uh, law students in this nation propor proportion to what the entire student body is. So we probably on average have, I would say 10 to 15% of our incoming class are people of color, black, Latino, and other. It is a struggle to get um, people of color in our program. Um, and it really is because the enrollment of law schools across the country in terms of people of color is still very low. And um, raising awareness about public interest and public defense. A lot of people go into corporate law and there's nothing wrong with that, but really wanting like service law, public service, we don't see a huge number of, of, of right. law students in those programs. But, but you know, Jeezy, I, I, I wanna add, I mean, I think that that's, that's all true. I also think for so many, I, I also teach law school and I teach at a law school in Atlanta called John Marshall. Got it. About 50% of our student body is African-American. Many of these, they are the first members of their family to right. graduate from college, let alone go to law school. And so the idea of turning down a job that pays significant salary mm -hmm. is, is, is hard for a lot of them. But, but I will say of the lawyers that come to Gideon's Promise, um, they embrace, as we do, the belief that this really is 
the civil rights issue of our generation. Absolutely, they come to this work absolutely because positive. like it goes back, and, back, back, back. It's, 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 it has to do with uh, systemic racism. It has. To, I mean, it's, it's it's so mind boggling. Like like, and right. it's crazy for us to get here in 2020 for all us to pull the right. work from under our eyes and go, wow, like this is. But but you know but. But, but I wanted to just add, so Illy said about 10 or 15% come to the program, but we then after, we have a three year program for new lawyers, okay. then we have an alumni program to groom them into leaders. Mm -hmm. And we have a core group of alumni who are really becoming the leaders of Gideon's Promise, because we're getting tired. Right. <laughs> we're getting tired. Yeah. Oh, and and of about, of about, of about. Look at baby, you look fresh. You look like you're ah, thank, you. You know? thank you. Thank <laughs> you. But, but, but roughly, roughly half of them, our lawyers of color, right. our, our, our black lawyers. And then we have three of our graduates who have gone on to run offices in Nashville, wow. in Tulsa, and in Detroit, all black women. Right. So I do think that, that, that for the most committed black public defenders, they stay in this work because these are their people, these are their communities. No, I love it, I love it. And, and, and I, I didn't ask for a specific reason, I, I just want to, um, mm -hmm. get my people and my followers to understand that like, that's, if you want to make a difference, you know, I know we march, I know we, uh, you know, we protest, I know we riot, but you know, that's, there's that option too. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you can be um, someone that looks like us or from where we from and actually fight in a whole nother way. Cause that's, to me, that's the real battlefield. You know, I, I think mm -hmm. the yeah. streets and marching is all good, but if you can't physically go get someone out, I mean, you know, I'm seeing, you know, everybody from Kim Kardashian, or, like these are real things because if somebody's sitting behind mm -hmm. bars and, and they didn't do something or they, they was, you know, charged unfairly and you actually go out and fight for them, like you're not just getting mm -hmm. a person out of jail, you're getting a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, and you bring them home. And that changes the whole dynamic in the family. And I think like where, where we grow up at and, and, and the things that we go through, um, we just become used to not being treated fair. And this is where you can actually get on the front line and actually fight back and be a part of the fight in a whole nother way. Um, yeah. And, and I, I'm saying that because I'm like, yo, if you're out here and you want something to do with yourself, this could be, you know, this could be something for you. You can actually get in this. You can actually be a lawyer and not just a look. Because yeah. everybody's not about money. When I started doing what I do, music, whatever, it was never based on the money. It was what I knew, how knowledgeable mm -hmm. I was, and what I understood about life. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put this in in my music because I want to create leaders, and it's good to hear you say that you guys are taking the time to create leaders because that's what it's all about. Leaders always create more mm -hmm. leaders, and that just opens up, you know, th this opens up a whole nother world of people out here able to fight this fight. Um, I actually like yeah. what what have you seen since the pandemic um that has changed in in, in criminal justice and, and and just um and just reform in general. I think one thing I've seen, so I, I used to do all the recruitment for the organization before I became executive director. And um, what, I, what I see a lot of, like to, your, to, to answer the, the question you asked earlier about how to keep folks get involved, I'm starting to see more students on the undergraduate level reach out to Gideon's Promise. Our program team to ask how they can be part of the organization. Right. But I'm also seeing, you know, public defenders have been often for the last 14 years we've been doing this, they've been absent from the national conversation on criminal justice reform. Mm. They, people, they, they just been forgotten. People talk about reforming the police, reforming prosecutors. They talk about reentry work when formerly incarcerated people return to society, which are all great things. But part in that law, that conveyor belt is the public defender the interrupter. And we've often been absent from the national conversation. I am starting to see now more and more people, you know, people who had no idea about the criminal legal system reaching out to us to learn more about public defenders because mm -hmm. people simply didn't know. I mean, sometimes people equated a public defender with a prosecutor based on their experience in the system. I didn't trust the system. Right. When I first got involved with criminal justice reform, I thought it was all part of the same machine until I really learned about the challenges public defenders were having. Right. And so that's the one thing I am seeing is more people like the athletes getting involved in, in the space and learning more about public defenders. Yeah. You, you, you know, the, the other thing I would add to that, Jeezy, is I think that, I mean, obviously the nation has been 
awakened, unlike anything, at least in, in my adult life, right. to the reality that, right. that racial oppression is, is part of the fabric of the country. We've seen the, the killings of, of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, Jacob, right. Jacob Blake shot seven times in the back. And I think people see that. What public defenders are doing is they're, they're helping us understand that that's not disconnected from a more routine, a more invisible violence that happens right, in courtrooms right, every right, day right, when YouTube right, isn't on, when right, cell right, phones right, aren't on, when, when 2.3 million people are processed into prisons and jails, right, that's violence as well. Right, Most people survive police encounters right, and are thrown into a system. And public defenders, as Illy said, are the ones who are there to interrupt that routine invisible violence. And I think we're starting to make that connection. Right. I, I think it's like this. This is the best, you know, time ever, I think, for for the movement, as you call it, <laughs> um, yeah. because we, we're all starting to really understand. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. It took so many events for us to all sit back and go like, you know what? We have a real live issue. It's like when the pandemic hit, the world slowed down. Everybody was focused. We got a chance to see what was really going on. And I just, you know, I because I, I can't help to think about the people that are um, false in prison, um, the people that are locked up and don't understand how to, the the the, um, the the justice system works. So they're going in there and they're taking plea deals. You know, they're going yep. and they're taking, being in bad situations. They're on probation, they're on parole, can't really get a job. They get out here. Um, they can't, you know, really feed their family. So they end up doing other things. And, it's, it, you know, even from um, uh, uh, what's going on right now with um, cannabis, it's crazy because I have so many cousins uncles brothers sisters is locked up for cannabis and here you go is it's legal i mean when i'm in la i'm like you know you can go in the store and buy it that's crazy to me you know and yeah. you got all the people that are actually sitting down doing real time and and until now i've never like until the last couple of years i've never heard or understood and i just want you guys to explain because i think a lot of times um we hear words, you know, and we don't understand exactly what they mean. So when you say reform, I, I want you to explain to them what what the process is and what's actually going on because we we need to know as a people. So when we walk in there, you're like the more knowledge you have about what you're dealing with, the better questions you can ask, the better position you can be in. So I just think I would love for you guys to explain what reform means to you. So So I think... When a lot of people talk about reform, they're talking about policy fixes. They're talking about, you know, ending money bail or reforming sentencing laws or electing less punitive prosecutors. And as Illy says, all of that is good, but we're talking about actually not really reform. We're talking about transformation. Mm -hmm. We think we need to transform the system. And I think when you understand that the entire system is fueled by a narrative, that says some people are subhuman, some people are others. It becomes really easy to just process those people right. into cages. Right. And so what we believe ultimately, we're not gonna have transformation if we don't have public defenders who learn the stories of people who have been silenced, who lift up the voices of people who have been deemed expendable and who force judges and prosecutors and decision makers to actually see the human beings behind the case file, right? Instead of seeing Illy's father as the crime he's charged with, see the man who's got three children and a fourth on the way, who's a small business owner. Absolutely. When you see that person, it becomes a whole lot harder to throw that life away. Right. So we're talking about transforming our values, our mindset, mm -hmm. our whole vision of the humanity of mm -hmm. people that have been disregarded. I love that word values. I love it. Love it. Love it. I love it. When I hear that word, I get excited. Um, okay, so listen, tell me about this book. What's going on here? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Was that was that you or us? I, was, I, I have no idea. Could you could you tell me about can you guys hear me now? Oh, I, I, you're back. <laughs> yeah, could you guys tell me about this book? Can you see us? Yeah, I see. Can you guys tell me about this book that I was gifted? The book. Yeah. <laughs> we say you wrote it. I read. I edited it. But you oh, wrote that's, it. Hey, that's what I call so, teamwork, baby. I love it. Say, 
the, the book is called Gideon's Promise, a public defender movement to transform criminal justice. And it really is the story. It's about everything we've been talking about, Jeezy. It's the story of how we moved to the South and really sort of saw this problem as a cultural problem, as a culture that had to be transformed, and how we really started just, you know, building this movement to do that transformation. And I've got to say, you know, Illy and I have been so fortunate over 14 years because we've been surrounded by the most amazing, courageous people who go into this system every day and they face judges and prosecutors, and they come home feeling just completely um, uh, 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 frazzled because right. they've watched people they care about right. get chewed up by the system, and they come back every day and resist. And this book is really the story of how this community supports them and how it's going to take this kind of movement to push the system to realize its ideals. And the one thing, he's not going to brag on himself, but the one thing I love about the book is that it's, my mom just recently read it. We sent it to her. I was nervous because she's my big, biggest critic and my biggest okay. fan. She said it was readable. She started to cry when she heard about the stories, and not just stories in Georgia, and Louisiana, Mississippi, right. Alabama, the Midwest, of everyday people that's just been thrown in and processed, right? Those consequences you talked about, GZ, about people taking a plea. They may say I'm guilty of something because I'm just trying to go home because I'm going to lose my job right, if right. I don't report the work. Right. Or, you know, someone's watching my kids and I can't and I got to get them back, right? Not knowing the consequences of that. And so it tells that story. And honestly, this book is the answer to transform the system. It's not just something, a model that we use that could work with public defenders. That's our main focus. But you can do it to, to transform the prosecutor's office, the marshals, the police department. And so it is really important that people read it with an open mind to really transform the system. I say dismantle it, but that's that's a whole nother conversation right. we won't get right. into. But it really is to really change the whole way we, we, are, we are looking at, you know, uh, criminal justice in America. And it's a great collection of stories. You meet some amazing people. Where, where, can, where can one find this book at? You can find a book on anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Here in Atlanta, there's an independent bookstore called Karis Books. You can get a signed copy from Rap. He autographed the book. But anywhere books are sold in the U.S., Amazon has been the main people place. People Our publisher is Beacon. You can go through Beacon, Indie Bound, any place books are sold, Jeezy. Oh. And but it's you, got you, an audio version to it. You don't know? have to go to Karis to get a signed book. I, I'm going <laughs> to sign one for you. <laughs> Hey, yo, so tell me, tell me you doing the voiceover for the audio book. You got to be, right? Right? No, so, the, yeah, so we, when they do round two, Jeezy, so the first one, we didn't really get to choose. The second one, I think we got to have Rap do the voice. Yeah, I like his voice, too. You got to do it, Rap. We'll let Jeezy do it. Jeezy, you do it. Huh? <laughs> you do the voice. Oh, talk. Man. We can talk. <laughs> you got to put, put me Wait. in movement. <laughs> but Jeezy. We're not profit, so I can't pay you. <laughs> okay. If we fight for a good cause, we can get into it. You know, I'm all I'm, I'm all here for the people. Listen, I enjoy. Listen, first of all, um, I never met you guys personally, but I feel your energy through the screen. Um, you know, second of all, I'm 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 so happy, and, and and I'm proud to see um you know people out here really fighting on the front line and using their expertise and and using their passion and their love to actually go out here and make this world a better place. So I commend you on that. If you're in Atlanta, check my people out. You know what I mean? Make sure y'all look them up. You guys out there, you know, going through a little court cases, hit wrap up, you know what I mean? He might be able to get you out, you know what I mean? If not, <laughs> no, man. Thank you guys so much. And it, it I had I had a pleasure talking to you guys. If it's, is there anything else you guys want to uh, shout out or speak on before we, we hop off? I just say, just follow us on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, because my team will be upset if I didn't say that. Follow, follow us. And thanks so much for giving us the space to talk about the, no, the work that it. these public defenders are doing. Thank you for the book. Thank you so much. And you guys keep fighting the good fight. And if I, if I get some guys that go through some things, I'll send them right your way. I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi.